الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي ينير البصائر ويوقظ الضمائر الحمد لله الذي هو للذنوب وللمعايب غافر وساتر وهو للحسنات شاكر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيه وعبده بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah سبحانه وتعالى And I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his prophet and messenger Allah سبحانه وتعالى tells us in the Quran إن أول بيت وضع للناس للذي ببكة مباركا وهدى للعالمين Indeed, the first house of worship that was put on earth is Al-Masjid Al-Haram. This masjid in Mecca where the Kaaba is. It's guidance for the whole humanity. Today I would like to talk to you about the importance of the masjid and the role of the masjid in the life of Muslims. But before that, I want to start Just before the immigration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Medina, and we, are, we have just came into a new year, this is probably the second month now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through times and Islam, went through times of power and strength, and went through times of weakness. The weakest, <coughs> the weakest ever, Islam, and the da'wah of Islam was is when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was pushed away from Mecca and he looks back and he says wallahi innaki la ahabu al-biladi ila qalbi wa lawla anna ahlaki akhrajuni minki makhrajd by Allah you are the most beloved place on earth for me but your people pushed me away. Otherwise, I would not have left. Why Muhammad وسلم, is trying to escape the persecution and even the prosecution of Quraysh? They were trying to kill him. He was hunted and wanted. That is the weakest point of the Islamic civilization of the da'wah of Rasulullah And Suraqa is behind him. You expect, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Muhammad sallallahu and he reaches Medina. Somebody in his weakness, he wants to go where he is strong. He wants to go where, it's, where people can defend him. That should be what's the first thing in his mind. But as soon as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa reaches the outskirts of Medina, in Qiba, what does he do? He stops. And he builds a masjid. Ya Allah. More important than to make sure that you are inside Medina and you're, you're secure, more important. But listen to the next one. He builds the masjid in a few days and then he moves. He moves inside Medina, just a few kilometers away. And what does he do? The first thing he does, he builds the masjid, the masjid in Nabawi. Two masjids in just a couple of weeks. This is just to let us know how important masajid are for the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Islam and for the Muslims themselves. Because without the masajid, there's a lot of things that cannot happen or could not have happened. Masjid for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the house of ruling. You know, each king and each president have this uh, special castle where they rule out of. That was the castle of Muhammad sallallahu to rule out of. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ Indeed, those who inhabit the masajid, who builds and construct the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those are the ones that are really having iman in their, and belief in their hearts. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also tells us that إِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ تُصَلِّ عَلَىٰ أَحَدِكُمْ ما دام في صفين صلى الله الذي صلى فيه ما لم يحدث. The angels are asking Allah سبحانه وتعالى to shower His mercy upon you as long as you are in the مصلى where you pray, as long as you are there making dua, making ذكر, making صلاة until you lose your wudu or until you move out of that place. That's how important the masajid are. Now we come to the role of the masajid. In the masajid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we pray in these masajid. That's why they were put. One of the main reasons, and it's the number one reason, is we come and we pray here. Without this masjid, we couldn't have had a place to pray Jum'ah. We'd have to go somewhere else and rent a place or something like that. But it's not something solid, it's not something constant, it's not something that we can come to all the time, so it doesn't actually serve its role. We have to have our own places. That's where we pray. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى مَا يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِ الْخَطَايَا Should I tell you about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes out all your sins, uh, wipes out the sins, and He raises you in, in the level إسباغ الوضوء على المكان. You make wudu even if the water is cold, even if it's a, a warm night and you don't want to use that water, even if it's a cold night and you don't want to use that cold water. إسباغ الوضوء على المكان وكثرة الخطا إلى المساجد. And too many steps to the masjid. Too many steps to the masjid means you keep going to the masjid. One prayer after another. Next one, وانتظار الصلاة بعد الصلاة. You pray dhuhr. And you can't wait until Asr comes. You're waiting. You say, oh, it's time for Asr. Let's go to the masjid again. It's time for Maghrib. Muslim's life, if he has the time and he can, should be like that. I'm waiting from this Salah to that Salah to come to the masjid for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wipe out what's in between of any mistakes that we do. فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ This is how you get ready and you'll be Guarding. Guarding what? Guarding your own soul. By being ready, making salah, coming to the masjid. This is how you guard yourself. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also says, مَنْ غَدَى لِلْمَسْجِدِ أَوْرَاحِ بَنَ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُزُلًا كُلَّمَا غَدَى أَوْرَاحِ Whoever comes to the masjid and then go back to his house or wherever he's going back to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build him a house in Jannah every time he goes to the masjid or come back from that masjid. So that's one role. To wipe out our sins, we come to the masjid and we pray. The second role is the knowledge. To get the knowledge and to get the guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it nur. وَمَن لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِن نُورٍ Whoever does not have the light, Allah, nobody will, can give him light. What do we need that light for? So we can differentiate between what's right and what's wrong. So we can tell if this is good or bad. So we can differentiate between injustice and justice. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the shining light of the, the skies and the earth. Where can I find this light? The light that we all need? Fi buyutin adina Allahu an turfa'a wa yudhkara fiha asma. In the houses of Allah, in the masajid. The second point is we need the masajid because that's where we learn our deen. Not only we practice salah, but we learn our deen by practicing it too. The third point, it's a social meeting for those who come to the masjid all the time and then they start seeing the same faces over and over and over 
It's a place where everybody should know your name, not only just your face. Eventually, go back. Go ahead, take one more step and say, Assalamu alaikum, my name is this and your name is that. And then you'll know him. Next time he doesn't come to the masjid, what happens? You're going to miss him. And you make sure he, he got his phone number. And the next time you'll call him and you'll say, Brother, are you okay? And once we have that, then it will be easy to fulfill all our needs. Because just by yourself, you can do a lot of things. But when you have a brother with you, you can do a lot more. Not double, but triple at least. Together, we can solve our each, you know, each other's problems. Together, when we know each other, it would be easier for us to find the husband for, for our daughters and the, and, and the wife for our sons. This is a problem that a lot of people, they come and ask, and what can we do? We need to be more social with each other. And the masjid brings us together. This is one of the roles of the masjid. We as parents, we should know each other. And then start visiting each other as families. But this is one role that the Muslims do, the social role. <laughs> Rasulullah, that's the third one. The fourth one, Rasulullah was sitting in the masjid and a group of the tribe of Mudar, they come into the masjid and you look at them, their clothes is torn, turn up, dirty. You could tell how poor they are. And you could tell from the face of Rasulullah when he's angry or when he's sad or when he's happy. And at that time, it was the sad face. He was sad because of what he saw. So he stood in the member and he called for people to come and join and share their wealth with their brothers. He called in and people started coming. Everybody that had extra, they came and shared it with Bani Mudr, with Mudar, until he got a big mountain of food and money and all of that stuff. And then he has another face, the face when he's happy. He was so happy because Muslims care for each other. This is what we call Arabic takaful. When we share this wealth, this is what we call takaful. That's another role of the masjid. And the roles of the masjid don't stop at there. They go on and on and on. But I want to move to another point. The ajr, the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have prepared for those who build masajid. Often we come in front of you and we tell you we are building a masjid here or there and then we ask you for money. And at that time, there's not enough time to explain these things. Today, we don't have a fundraising yet. I want to explain it in details. So next time we talk about it, you know the whole thing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith that has at least four narrations. And I will tell you the extras in the other narrations. مَنْ بَنَى لِلَّهِ مَسْجِدًا وَلَوْ كَمِفْحَصِ قَطَاتٍ لِبَيْضِهَا بَنَى اللَّهُ لَهُ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ Whoever builds a house for the sake of Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means the masjid. Even if it's as big as a bird's nest called qata for its eggs, Allah will build him a house in Jannah. Qata is a bird that usually exists around deserts. It doesn't do like normal birds and go, builds its nest on the tree. It goes on the ground, it digs in the sand, and it makes a small hole like this, maybe a less than one foot square, and it lays few eggs in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you build a house, as big as that house, less than a foot square, square foot, Allah will build you a house in Jannah. And you wonder, who's going to pray in a masjid that's less than a square foot? Nobody. Of course nobody. <coughs> what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is trying to tell us, Allah gave you so much. 
You can build the whole masjid. That's what I'm asking you to do. You build the whole masjid. You have 50 million dollars. I'm asking you to build the whole masjid. Or maybe two. But if all what you have is a thousand dollars that you can spare that year, it might be, and you might be able to buy a special land that one person can pray on. It costs between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, depending on the masjid that you are in. Why not have a place that every time somebody comes and pray in that masjid, I get the same ajib that they are getting? So, the basic idea here. You do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. He gave you as much as that one square foot, then you pay for that square foot. If that's all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you, He's given you more, then you do more. This is the idea. You want a house in Jannah? You have to build as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you. Not more, not less. More is good, but less, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it accepted? Now that the narrations, the four narrations, one of them says, La yuridu bihi riya'an wa la sum'a. He, he's not looking for somebody. He's, he's not doing it as, as a show off. And he he's not looking for somebody to say that he did it. MashaAllah, he, he gave this much in, in the masjid. Yabtabi bihi wajhallah. He's doing it for the sake of the ajr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he worked only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the, other, the, the last one, Kabiran or Sagiran, whether this masjid or part of the masjid was big or small. Now I come to probably one of my last points. There was a story of a man. It was mentioned in a beautiful book. It's called The Magnificent Ottoman History, the Ottoman Empire. <coughs> that uh, book was written by or Khan Muhammad Ali, about a man called uh, Khayruddin Kajaji. Simple man, a teacher in Istanbul. He wanted to pray. He looked in his neighborhood, the one he moved into, there is no masjid. So he figured, we need a masjid. He understands the message of Rasulullah when he builds these masajid right away, one in Quba and one in Medina, as soon as he comes in, he understands it. So he realizes that he needs to build the masjid. And he's not going to go to everybody and tell them you have to build the masjid. He's going to start with his own self. He's going in the market, he sees the apples, they're red, they're beautiful, and he wants to eat them. And then he realizes, oh. <coughs> But if I buy them, I won't have extra money to save for the masjid. <coughs> so he tells himself, Sanki Yadam, which means as if I have eaten it. I'll imagine I've eaten those apples, and I'll take the money, the $2 or whatever that I was supposed to buy the apples with, and I'll save them. And he started putting them in, in, in a box. All this money that every time he sees something he likes and he would like to eat, and he'll say, as if I have eaten it. And he'll put the money there until one day he dies. His neighbors knew the story. He had enough money to buy the land, he had bought the land, but he didn't have enough money to build the masjid. So they collected the rest of the money and they built the masjid. And they called it as if I have eaten it. It's still standing in Istanbul until today. SubhanAllah. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way to do it. Loving Masajid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about seven people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them under his shade in the day of judgment when there is no shade but the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he mentions one of them, وَرَجُلٌ يَقَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ And one man or a woman that their heart is connected to the masjid, finishes one salah and can't wait until he goes to the next salah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who understand the value of the masjid. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who inhabit the masajid. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who construct the masajid. 
and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who use the masajid to their full potential. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these masajid a places where we can gain good uh, behaviors for our children. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in these masajid we will make our children understand who are they and what is their purpose in this life and what is really halal, whether it's legal or not, and what is really haram, whether it's legal or not. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says inna lil masajid awtada al malaikatu julasauhum in ghabu yaftaqidunahum wa in maridu yauduhum wa in kanu fi hajatin a'anuhum Allah Rasulullah is saying there is foundations to every masjid. He called them foundation. These people, he called them like foundations. They're the ones who make the masjid stable. Angels are the ones who set to them. Not Abdullah and Muhammad and these good Muslims. No, no, no. The angels will come and sit to them. If they don't come to the masjid, they will miss them. And if they are sick, they will go and visit them. And if they are in need, to do something, fulfill something, they will go and help them. Ya Allah, that's how important coming to the masjid and being in the masjid and inhabiting the masjid. Yes, absolutely. Where else anybody would tell you that whether the government makes marijuana legal or not, it's still haram. Where else somebody will tell you and will tell your children that when you use marijuana, it's only the door to the rest of the drugs, cocaine and, and others. I've seen a 20 year old, 20 years old. And he used to come to the masjid, by the way. His parents are people who come to the masjid. Somehow, in the public school system, he cracked in and he went into just smoking. Smoking led him to marijuana. Marijuana led him to cocaine and others. Hardcore drugs tried everything with him, even with real professionals tried with him, and it never worked. I'm not saying it doesn't work all the time. In this case, it didn't work. Why do we even want to open up a door on us that will make us have to suffer like that? This is one of the things that you'll never hear except probably in a masjid like this, or in a place that they really respect. Once we had marijuana in the streets, 19 year old, you get whatever is needed and you see, they start using it. The problem doesn't stop at that person being addicted. You don't know what kind of accidents they can make when they drive. Oh, okay, they're not supposed to drive. They're not allowed to drive, okay? And once they don't have money, of course, that's the next thing. They lose all their money. What they are going to do? If they're still at the house, they're going to steal from your house. And if they're not at the house and they don't have anybody to steal from, they'll steal from the street. And if they can't, they'll start robbing with guns. And once they start doing that, nobody's safe out there. Go look at the cities that did that. Simple. They started with gambling, and they allowed it. And once those people, addicted people to gambling, started not having money, more crime started. We cannot change that fact. But we can make our children understand. We can sit down with them and let them know that it's haram because it's not just your own self. And it's not just because it relaxes you 
because of what's after that. After it relaxes them, it's not going to be enough. Next, they want something more. You know what they do now? They mix it with some other substance. And now there is hallucination once they mix it with that substance. And then it's not enough. And then they go to the hardcore, hardcore drugs. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who their children are guided to the right way. Amen. That we give our children enough time and enough effort and enough attention that we know what they're doing, when they're doing it, and we guide them to the right way. اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين أن نعصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا اللهم إنا نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والسلامة من كل إثم والعزيمة من كل بر والفوز بالجنة والفوز بالجنة والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار والنجاة من النار اللهم اهدي أبناءنا وبناتنا وجنبهم الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم هيئ لهم الصحبة الصالحة اللهم إنا نسألك عيش السعداء ونيل الشهداء والفوز بالقضاء والنصر على الأعداء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وسوء القضاء وشماتة الأعداء اللهم إنا نسألك باسمك الأعظم الذي إذا سئلت به أعطيت وإذا دعيت به أجبت وإذا استرحمت به رحمت اللهم فك أسر المسجد الأقصى اللهم فك أسر المسجد الأقصى اللهم فك أسر المسجد الأقصى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد ودم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقر الصلاة